Raspberry Pi has many uses, with new ones seemingly appearing out of nowhere each day. One of our favourite things here at MTE is Pihole, a Raspberry Pi ad blocker that can block ads across all devices on your network. It's an all-in-one ad block package and we're going to show you how to use it now. Hi, this is Phil from Make Tech Easier and this is Block Any Ad Using Pihole on Raspberry Pi. While there are plenty of ad blockers that can banish adverts from your laptop or computer, these rarely work on other devices such as smartphones and tablets. This video will show you how to transform your Raspberry Pi into a network-wide ad blocker using Pihole. Once completed, you'll be able to block ads across your laptop, computer, smartphone, tablet and any other device that's connected to your network. What you'll need to complete this tutorial, you will need, of course, a Raspberry Pi that's running Raspbian. If you don't already have Raspbian installed, grab the latest version and flash it using Etcher. Power cable that's compatible with your Raspberry Pi. External keyboard and a way to attach it. HDMI or micro HDMI cable, depending on your model of Raspberry Pi. External monitor and an Ethernet cable or Wi-Fi connection. Once you've assembled your tools, you're ready to create your network-wide ad blocker. Installing Pi Hole on your Raspberry Pi. If you haven't already, attach your external keyboard and monitor and any other peripherals to your Raspberry Pi and then attach the Pi to the power source. As soon as your Raspberry Pi boots, you're ready to download Pihole's installation script. Simply launch the terminal by clicking the terminal icon in the Raspbian toolbar and type the following commands. curl minus SSL HTTPS colon slash slash install dot pi dash hole dot net and then new command and then bash. You can do this all in one go using this layout. Press enter. Raspbian will download the script and begin the process of configuring your device to use Pihole. After a few moments, Pihole's setup screen should launch automatically. Google Cloudflare Open DNS, choosing a DNS provider. You'll need to choose an upstream DNS provider, which will be responsible for answering queries for non-ad domains. Pihole supports the following preset DNS providers, but you can enter your own by entering custom. Google, OpenDNS, Level 3, Komodo, DNS Watch, Quad9, Filtered, DNS SEC, Quad9, Unfiltered, DNS SEX, Quad9, Filtered, ECS, and Cloudflare. In this tutorial, we'll be using Google, but you can choose whichever DNS provider you would prefer. Which blacklists should Pihole use? Specify the lists that Pihole should use in order to identify and block undesirable content. These will vary over time. Unless you have a specific reason to change these settings, it's usually a good idea, as usual, to go with the defaults. Internet protocols, IP4 or IP6 or both. It actually doesn't matter if you choose IP4 or IP6, but if you want to block as many adverts as possible, you should leave both IPv4 and IPv6 selected. Configuring a static IP address. Use your current network settings as Pihole's static address. Assuming you're happy with the information that's displayed on screen, use the arrow keys to select yes and then press enter. Read the disclaimer carefully and if you agree, select OK. Monitoring Pihole with the Web Admin Interface. You'll be asked whether you want to install Pihole's Web Admin Interface. This interface provides an insight into how Pihole is operating on your network, so it's recommended that you opt to install the web interface when prompted. If you install the Web Admin Interface, you should also install Lite TPD Web Server when prompted. Logging Pihole's data. You can choose to disable Pihole's logging capabilities, but I recommend leaving these enabled as they provide some useful information. You'll be prompted to select a privacy mode for FTL, which is the level of information that will be included in your Pihole statistics. Choose from the following. Show everything. Hide domains. Show and store all domains as hidden. Hide domains and clients. Show and store all domains as hidden and clients as 0000. zero, zero, zero. Anonymous mode, hide all details except the most anonymous statistics. Or disable statistics, disables all statistics processing, including query counters. Logging into your Pihole account. The setup dialog will display the address of Pihole's web admin interface and the password you'll need to log into this interface. Make a note of this information on a bit of paper. 
If you head over to the URL provided, you'll encounter Pi-hole's standard web interface and can log in using the password you got before. The web admin interface is divided into the following sections. Query log, this displays the most recent queries that have been made to the DNS server. Whitelist, you can specify the domains that Pi-hole should never block. Blacklist, are some ads still managing to slip past Pi-hole? If you can identify the domain that's responsible for these rogue ads, then you can manually add these to Pi-hole's blacklist. Disable. This is where you can temporarily or permanently disable Pi-hole so you can start seeing all your favorite ads again. Update lists. Make sure you have the very latest of Pi-hole's ad block lists by manually triggering an update. Query ad lists. Use this tool to check whether a particular URL is included in Pi-hole's ad blocking lists. Tail pihole.log. This tool lets you examine Pi-hole's log file so that you can see exactly how Pi-hole is processing incoming requests. Settings. You can make a number of changes to Pi-hole's configuration, including which upstream DNS provider you want to use. This is just a brief overview of Pi-hole's web admin interface. It's well worth taking a little bit of time to explore the interface in more detail and learning how it works. Troubleshooting. Could not resolve host. It's just possible while configuring Pi-hole that you may encounter an error in the terminal window. Could not resolve host FTL engine not installed. If you do encounter this message, run the following terminal command, sudo nano slash etc slash resolve.conf. This launches the resolve.conf file in the nano editor. You'll need to add the IP addresses of your chosen DNS provider to the resolve.conf file. For example, it is using Google as the DNS provider, so a quick Google search reveals that 8.8.8.8 should be added to resolve.conf. To save your changes, use the Control O keyboard shortcuts and then press Y when prompted. Close resolve.conf by using the Control plus X keyboard shortcut. Relaunch Pi-hole's setup dialog by running the following terminal command: curl minus ssl https colon slash slash install dot pi dash hole dot net and then bash. You should now be able to complete the setup dialog without any errors. Update your router, creating a network-wide ad blocker. Now this can be problematic, <laughs> as we're about to find out. At this point, you're ready to update your devices or router to use Pi-hole. If you want to block adverts across all devices that are connected to your network, you'll need to change the router's DNS settings to point at your Raspberry Pi device. The process of changing your router's DNS settings will vary depending on your exact model of router, but as an overview, you'll need to head over to your router's admin page, log in using your username and password. If you don't know this information, chances are you're using the manufacturer's default username and password. Find this information on the website or the documentation, or sometimes written directly onto your router. Look for any tab menu or section that contains the words DNS server or DHCP server in the settings. And also note that these settings may be hidden in an advanced setup section. Update your router's primary DNS server to the IP address of your Raspberry Pi. If you don't know the address, you can retrieve it from your Raspberry Pi by typing the command hostname-i. For instructions on how to update the DNS settings for your specific router, check the manufacturer's website or the physical documentation that came with your router. Now here's the problem. My router doesn't actually allow you to change the DNS settings. <laughs> of course it doesn't. But if you do hunt around in the menu system of your router, you will find a page like these ones where you can actually change the DNS settings and you can actually put these IP addresses in there. So what do you do if you can't do that? Well, you can use Pi-hole to block ads on specific devices. How to block online ads on specific devices. You can also change the DNS settings for specific devices and operating systems. Windows. To update your DNS settings on Windows, launch the control panel. Navigate to Network and Internet, Network and Sharing Center, and change adapter settings. Select the connection you want to configure. Right click Local Area Connection and Properties, select the Networking tab, select TCP IPv4 or TCP IPv6. Navigate to Properties, Advanced, DNS and then click OK. Select Use the following DNS server addresses. Replace the address in this section with the IP addresses of your Raspberry Pi. Your Windows PC is now set up to use your Pi-hole ad blocker. Linux. If you're a Linux user, you'll need to 
by opening the slash etc slash resolve dot conf file as previously stated on the Raspberry Pi. Mac OS. To update your DNS settings in Mac OS, select the Apple logo in your Mac's toolbar, navigate to System Preferences and Network, select the connection you wish to edit, click Advanced, select the DNS tab, click the little plus icon and enter your Raspberry Pi's IP address. Save your changes by clicking Apply or OK. PiHole will check all your requests against its blacklist and block as many adverts as possible iPhone. If you own an iPhone or iPad, then launch the settings application, select Wi-Fi and tap your home network on the list, select the DNS field, delete all current DNS servers and replace them with the IP address of your Raspberry Pi. Android. To block adverts on Android, launch the settings application, select Wi-Fi, long press on the Wi-Fi network you want to update, select modify network and advanced options, tap DHCP, and then select Static. In DNS1, enter your Raspberry Pi's IP address. Tap Save. OK, while using your Raspberry Pi as an ad blocker, it can also be used as a Wi-Fi access point or a personal web server. Please feel free to check these out. Links in the description. OK, that's a lot to take in. As always, thanks for watching. That's all for now. See you next time.